So a bit of cerulean blue. I'm going to use some raw sienna or yellow ochre. Any one of these sort of yellowy, earthy colours. And a bit of lemon yellow. I'm going to keep it quite a small palette of colours and I'm going to use a bit of black which I'll mix with my yellow to create oops, get a nice green. So you don't need much paint out, if you've got pans of colour that makes it much easier. And I'm going to use some salt to just get a bit of nice interesting texture at the bottom here. So we can always go back in and add more pen afterwards. So the first thing, oh, not to roll your paintbrush in your paint. <laughs> If you've got about a number 10 or 12 brush, that's quite nice for doing the sky area. You know on um, Ian's work, he doesn't often put any colour in the sky, but I think it's quite nice to have a little bit. Um, we've not got a huge amount of sky, so I'll, I'll just use my number 8. So then, Rosie, you've got a number 8 brush? You've got, a, bit, you've got a bigger one? Six. Nine will do. So first thing I'm going to do is to just wet my sky area. If it goes over your mountains a little bit, doesn't matter. Obviously the bigger brush you can do it quicker. If it was a bigger sky area, you'd need a bigger brush. I'm just wetting that, just the sky area. And then when you mix up your paint, just move that over a little bit so you can see. We don't want to mix the whole of that, just pull some colour from the side into your water and it's always a good idea to have your own palette because then you can leave your paint on it, it can dry and you can reuse it the next day. So um, you can always test the strength of the colour there. That's quite strong but there's already water on our paper so I'm just going to pull that down a little bit so it doesn't curl up. And just, just going to dab some bits of blue into my sky. Wash my brush, dry it a little bit. This cerulean or cobalt, and just soften these edges out a little bit. Then we're just sort of creating some clouds in the sky. Put plenty of water on there so it'll take a while to dry. Just makes it look a little bit more interesting without getting too busy. get a slight variation in blues rather than doing a wash of blue. And then don't fiddle with it, just leave it and let it dry. While that's drying I can put some uh, salt and bits and pieces down here for the foliage. So I'm going to take my lemon yellow, which is a bright yellow, and a little bit of black in it and you get this really nice sort of dirty green. And of course also if I mix my yellow with my blue I'll get a much brighter and lighter green. So I want these quite strong colours. So I'm just going to, it doesn't matter if you've got bits of blue in there as well, get some yellow in that one, put that in here. Just to suggest where you know where the foliage is, leave some bits of, of white showing as well. And a little bit stronger down here. So if you have got a bigger brush, you'll probably get one better. Put a bit of blue in there as well, and I've got this yellow ochre or your burnt sienna. Just add some of that in. Don't worry about it. We're going to work nice and quickly. <coughs> So this is onto dry paper, this is. And then what I'll do is right while that's really nice and wet, 
pick up a bit of salt and just sprinkle it onto your foreground. You just have to leave that and let that dry for a few minutes. So what happens is the salt absorbs the pigment and then we get these little speckles of, of colour and pattern down in the foreground. So we'll leave that for a few minutes and then we'll come back and add some colour into the mountains and hills in the distance. If you're not ready to do that, don't worry, come back to it later. 